Belinda Shee. Welcome to another episode of my photography tips. When it comes to travel and photography, most of us seem to know to pick the right season. For example, the summer or the fall, when the weather is great and the colors are beautiful. However, when it comes to photography during the trip, many of us don't seem to know how to master the good timing and capture the best photos. Today, let me share with you some quick tips so you don't bypass the best photo opportunities in your next trip. All right, today's tips have something to do with the first P of my 3P photo creation process. To understand the definition of my 3P photo creation process and what each P means, you can go onto my website, belindasheet.com, and click on the first lesson link. It's uh, pretty uh, straightforward, so instead of uh, repeating what I said on my website, I'm going to uh, share with you what this video tutorial I'm going to talk about. Before I go into details, this uh, presentation was prepared in my favorite photo software, Adobe Lightroom. And for each photo on the top left corner, you can see two lines of information. The first line is the location of the photo, where the photo was taken, and the second line is the uh, metadata of information pulled directly from my camera, and uh, it has um, the specific date and time of each photo. All right, um, so walk with me. Imagine that you're a traveler right now. You travel to Greater Lake National Park in Oregon, the Pacific West of the US, and right before 3 p.m. in middle af in the afternoon, you see a beautiful scene like this. And uh, of course, you're gonna take out your camera and take a snapshot. But wait, look. This was taken exactly on the same day and just a few hours later, right before 7 p.m., look at the two pictures. I, was, I took these two pictures exactly at the same spot and look at how different they look. The colors of the second picture look so stunning. Um, okay, a quick comparison again. This was taken before 3 p.m. and this was taken four hours later before 7 p.m. All right, I'll give you another example. Let's travel to Glacier National Park in Montana. And this picture, I took it before 2 p.m. in the afternoon, whereas this picture uh, was before 8 p.m. at 7.47 p.m. specifically. So they are almost with the same composition, but look how different they look. I can go on and on give you tons of examples. This is probably better in Badlands National Park in South Dakota. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure many of you can walk away from a scene like this uh, because it, it doesn't look so stunning, right? And this picture, I took it at 4.50 p.m. in the afternoon. But wait, if you wait for two hours exactly at the same spot, this is another picture I took at 6.55 p.m. Uh, well, I haven't artificially painted any of those pictures, uh, by the way. These are all natural colors from the sun, and all you need to do is to wait a little bit. Uh, let's do a very quick comparison for 4.50 p.m. and two hours later, 6.55 p.m. I'm pretty sure that uh, if you can come away with a picture like this and show your family and friends, uh, so many of them will be so proud of what you have seen. Um, so given the opportunities to take uh, uh, and to walk away with uh, stunning photos like this, why you don't just to wait a few hours, or sometimes it could be less than one hour apart. This is a perfect example in Yosemite National Park in California. Um, I took this picture in the evening at 7.13 p.m. Now wait, look at the second picture. It was only 40 minutes later. You don't have to wait for a few hours. Sometimes you can just wait for you know, 20, 30, 40 minutes, and you can completely walk away with different pictures with different colors. Again, 7.13 p.m., 7.53 p.m. at the same spot. 
So now you say, hey, I am a traveler who enjoy more uh, in the urban metropolis instead of in the wilderness. So what are the examples you can show me? Okay, I will show you uh, my uh, home in San Francisco. This was taken at Palace Fine Arts in the evening at 6.08 p.m. Look, literally less than one hour uh, later, uh, 6 59 p.m. Uh, look at the pictures I get away with compare these two pictures which one is better I'm I'm pretty sure it's pretty obvious uh, here's another example urban scene in New York uh, this is the tallest building in the US right now one World Trade Center I took this for 27 p.m. in the afternoon Again, this picture was taken exactly at the same spot with slightly different composition, but just one hour later at 5.34 p.m. Look how different these two pictures look like. I'm not really saying that this first picture is crappy, but compare these two pictures, I'm pretty sure 90% or 99% of people will uh, like the second picture better, yet they're only one hour apart. If you have the option to wait a little bit in a scene or even better, plan ahead to arrive at your favorite scene uh, at the right timing, why not? And get away with a better picture with beautiful colors uh, instead of with something that uh, anyone else can get. So. Now you might ask, so what exactly is the best timing to photograph beautiful landscapes? And how shall I plan on getting there without hours of wait? These are excellent questions. So let me address them one by one. Okay, the first question, what is the best timing? Uh, let's take a very quick look at these photo examples again. And let me pull out more information so you have a better idea what, these, uh, what time these photos were taken relative to sunset. For example, the New York City One World Trade Center. I took this 20 minutes after sunset. All right. And notice that uh, the sunset on that particular day, May 10th, 2014 this year, was in local time was 8.07 p.m. And then I uh, happened to have my camera setting uh, still set at the San Francisco local time, and which was three hours uh, behind New York. And this is the only uh, mistake I had in this presentation, but uh, just give you an overview. The local time I took this picture should be 8.34 p.m. <clears throat> and the sunset was 8.07 p.m. Another example, urban scene with the city lights on. Obviously, you wanted to take it after sunset when the sky is dark and when the lights are on. And Palace Fine Arts, 48 minutes after sunset. Now, in the wilderness, it might be a little different uh, picture. I took this in uh, Glacier Point at Yosemite National Park 17 minutes before sunset. It is not after sunset because there's no city lights and it will be completely dark if you do it uh, you know, very late. Of course, there is a small time window where you can still take pictures after sunset in the wilderness. For example, this one in Badlands, I took it five minutes after sunset. And uh, in Glacier National Park, 41 minutes before sunset. So uh, this gives you a rough estimation. One hour before and after sunset, it looks like it's the common theme or common time I took these photos. All right, of course, uh, these are not Definitely not the only time you can take landscape photos, but it happened to be a safe time window where you can get beautiful colors, uh, no matter uh, in the urban scene, um, after sunset, getting the lights, or in the wilderness, uh, getting the sunlight, uh, golden colors, okay? Now, you're gonna ask the, the second question, so how do I know uh, the exact sunset time uh, for these particular locations I'm traveling to? Uh, excellent question again. So I'm gonna show you a few examples. There is a photo app called 
the photographer's uh, ephemeris, their uh, website is like this. It's photoephemeris.com. Lots of professional landscape photographers or even experienced amateur landscape photographers use this photo app. They used to have a free desktop version for some reason uh, starting from September this year. It doesn't work anymore. Now, uh, there's a free web app. You can input, for example, Palace Pine Arts uh, in San Francisco. I've already put this information here. And you can see a map where Palace Fine Arts is located. And then you can pull out all the information. Um, this is by default today when I pulled out the information. So sunset is uh, local time is 6.42 p.m. So for me to take, uh, for example, this picture today, I will not need to arrive at, you know, at the scene before 6.42 p.m. And in fact, it might be better I arrive after 7.30, uh, 40 or 50 minutes or even one hour after sunset. Okay, and similarly, you can use the same app, uh, put in the other information, New York. Uh, of course, it's better that you put in a specific, like for example, Brooklyn uh, Bridge, New York City. All right, so in New York, you will know the local sunset time is 6.26 p.m. if you wanted to photograph Brooklyn Bridge. Of course, there's another options. You can just go to sunrisesunset.com and, for example, input uh, New York City, and then you can pull out a whole month information, sunrise, sunset, and in even including some other uh, twilight information. I have actually have very detailed video tutorials actually in maybe two or three different video tutorials uh, I created before um, telling you how to use sunrisesunset.com website. So these are some very quick tips showing you how to efficiently manage your time during your trip without waiting for hours. All you need to do is to plan a little bit better to walk away with beautiful memories, with beautiful colors and beautiful pictures. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my future episode.